the, the procedure of the minimally invasive transforaminal lumbar antibody fusion is a commonly done procedure around the country on a daily basis. This is a procedure that I currently do through a minimally invasive technique. And the advantage of doing it minimally invasive is that we do a far less degree of muscle stripping from the bone. And what this translates to is a lesser amount of bleeding, a lesser amount of post-operative soft tissue swelling, and certainly that will translate into a lesser amount of post-operative pain. Patients will do well in terms of strengthening the muscle, Postoperatively, as we go forward as well, these patients can recover nearly 100% of their muscle strength after an operation using a minimally invasive technique. Whereas studies have shown that when the procedure is done with a traditional open technique, due to the fact that the muscles have to be stripped far beyond the edges of the bone, the nerve supply is damaged and therefore the muscle will become scarred down and no longer functions as independent uh, sliding muscles but it's one big scarred down muscle mass which has a far less degree of muscle strength uh, and fatigability. So the procedure is essentially a fusion procedure. What we're doing is a 360 degree fusion, which means that we're fusing both the front of the spine as well as the back of the spine. The advantage of doing it through a transforaminal approach is that we're doing this 360 degree fusion through one approach. Sometimes a, a fusion can be done from the front of the spine. Sometimes it can be done from the back of the spine. And in certain situations, it's done both front and back. But the advantage is that we're doing this in the front of the spine via a posterior approach. And so what I do with this procedure is we make two separate small incisions, which are about an inch in length on both sides. And the, mus the, the incisions are centered over the muscles, over the paraspinal muscle groups. We come down through the facet joint, and that exposes the foramen where the nerve root is actually sitting. As we expose out the nerve foramen, the approach is called the transforaminal approach because we're working through the nerve tunnel. Once I do this, once I get down into the disc base, I'm able to remove the disc material, and I insert a small cage, which is what we see right here. This is actually a carbon fiber cage, but there's different kinds of cages that can be placed into the inner space. And this device is a prosthesis. It's actually hollow, and it allows for the insertion of graft material. We can use cadaver bone. We can use the patient's own bone. We can use bone morphogenic protein. And there's a variety of different kinds of graft material that are available. Uh, in this particular situation, my current preference is to use bone, uh, bone morphogenic protein, which is considered to be what the FDA considers as an off-label usage, meaning that it was only approved for insertion from the front of the spine, but we technically use this in an off-label application. The last thing that I do once I put the cage in place is I put the screws and rods, and you can see here four screws, two screws on each side, the left and the right side, with two rods, one left and one right. The graft material can then be laid down across the sides of the spine as well, and that's our 360 degree fusion. At that point in time, the patient is admitted to the hospital, generally overnight stay in the hospital. That's all uh, is required for a single level fusion. In fact, two level fusions and even three level fusions can be done this way with an overnight stay in the hospital. The downtime for the patients, typically they're up and moving. Uh, we can have patients back to work uh, with sedentary jobs as quick as a week. Uh, certainly if the patient's doing a more laborious type job, with a lot of lifting, it can take a much longer period of time. As far as the complications with the procedure, certainly a, uh, a wound infection can be seen with any kind of operation. But fortunately, with this procedure, what I found is that our wound infection rate is far less than 1%, uh, which greatly outperforms the traditional open procedure. The risk of neurologic injury is also very small, as well as the risk of a spinal fluid leak. Bleeding is usually not very substantial since we're not exposing a great deal of muscle and therefore our blood loss tends to be very minimal, as well as the, uh, the risk of the spinal fluid leak. These patients uh, have a lesser degree of post-operative pain post-operatively and they do tend to uh, improve and enhance their activities rather early on in their post-operative course.